Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Chad O'Shea and I am ready to talk some sports today. If you're new to my channel, I would appreciate if you give this video a thumbs up, click that subscribe button, and comment and let me know your opinions on today's topic. Today I want to talk about the NFL and coronavirus and what their procedures are, their lack of procedures, um, and you know my concerns with the season going on as planned or really even finishing throughout this pandemic that we're in today. Um, you know, the severe lack of planning on the NFL's part over the last few months really has me, you know, concerned as far as how sustainable whatever plans they do have in place are to keep the players healthy, keep the coaches and staff healthy, um, and prevent a big breakout that's going to postpone some games or cancel the season. So in this video, I'll be explaining why I feel this way, why I feel a little bit skeptical on the NFL season's ability to sustain a season during a pandemic and limit that spread, and also what I would suggest that they consider implementing as far as additional plans and additional protection processes to make sure that um, the least amount of games get postponed or affected as possible. Ideally none, but you know, as we've seen from other sport leagues, you know, it's really hard to limit the potential for postponement. So I want to start by saying that I want football this year. I'm a huge football fan. I love the NFL, love the Vikings. I want football this year, you know, college and professional. Um, but, you know, just the way that the NFL has really went about the offseason and really their lack of planning heading into this season, which starts only a couple weeks from now, really has me concerned. And in my opinion, to be truthfully honest with you, I think this 2020 NFL season is destined to fail. So I know that opinion seems a little bit drastic, but let me explain why I feel this way. If you look back at a few months ago when the sports world really collapsed due to coronavirus, that was around March, mid-March, um, look at what was happening back then. You had the NBA and NHL about to get into playoff season, the MLB was about to start their season, uh, March Madness and college basketball was about to begin, um, and then you had the NFL offseason about to begin with free agency and then the draft soon after that. Now look at all those leagues and the periods that they were in. The NBA, NHL, college basketball, MLB, they had no time to wait. As soon as things were halted or started getting serious, they had to make a decision. Either cancel the season now, postpone it, or figure out a way to power through. So most of them postponed it. March Madness, they canceled their tournament. Um, the NFL didn't really have to do anything. They could still do free agency. Obviously, they did it in a more remote aspect where you can do visits and things like that. And then they eventually did the NFL draft as a virtual event, which was pretty well received. But the NFL didn't have to make any decisions about their season back then. And then you fast forward to today, the end of August, with the season around the corner just a couple weeks from now. Really, what procedures do the NFL have in place universally to make sure all these teams limit the spread, not only within their own organizations, but when it comes to game day and interacting with other teams from other cities? And really, what the NFL has done is nothing. When you look at, as far as coming up with procedures, national, um, across the league procedures, there really isn't anything in place. I know they've come out with a few things that encourage players to stay within team facilities and don't go out and about um, and do reckless behavior. I think, you know, some players are subject to suspensions or um, no game checks if they're caught, you know, with reckless behavior and catch the virus. So that's one step, and that's really step one. Um, and the NFL, you know, you can't do a bubble. There's so many teams and so many players on a team that a bubble like the NBA and NHL, um, it just wouldn't work. But what you can do is put each team in their own bubble within their own city um, and really limit where players and team members can go throughout the season. Now you look at the effects of a bubble or a hub city. Look at the NBA. They're playing in Disney World. Um, at the beginning, there was a few positive tests, but ever since they started, really, I don't think there's a single active COVID case in the NBA right now. There might be one or two or a handful maybe, but it's really nothing to warrant canceling games or postponing. Um, they've handled it pretty well down in Florida. And then you look at the NHL. You know They've had two hub cities in Canada, um, and even in those two hub cities, when the playoffs first started, no one tested positive for the virus. Out of everyone in the NHL, everyone on the teams, no one tested positive. Um, so they set the expectation from the jump that uh, we're going to be in these hub cities, we're going to limit what you can do, and we want to make sure the season goes off without a hitch. So they did a good job as well. On the flip side, if you look at the MLB and what their procedures were, they really didn't have a plan. And they were paying for it when the season first started with the Cardinals and uh, the Marlins. Marlins were the other team. Uh, those are kind of the two main teams that had 
huge breakouts, and then a few other teams here and there have had some games postponed because of that. But they don't really have any restrictions. The only thing they've done is limit the teams that you play to your specific region um, in the country, whether you're Western, Central, or Eastern. Um, so you only play teams within those specific regions. But there's no bubbles, no hub cities, no really limit to what players can do. Um, you know, players have went out to casinos, they've went out um, in public, and they've brought the virus into their organizations. Um, that's really the main thing that the Cardinals and the Marlins did. They were reckless and they brought the virus to their teams. Now, I think we would see a much different result from the MLB if from the start they set strict guidelines on what players and coaches and team members can and can't do. Um, although it seems a little bit restrictive, um, it seems like almost like a prison type of atmosphere to limit them and what they can do. Um, if they want a season to continue, they have to play ball and they have to obey those rules. But if they don't have any rules in place, you're going to have players that go rogue and just kind of do what they feel. So those are the contracts. You have the MLB who didn't have a plan and it got really messy and still is a little bit messy. They've recovered a little bit, but it is still a little bit messy in the MLB. Um, but then you look at the NBA and NHL, they have it fully under control at this point. Uh, because you know they have set expectations in place now the NFL um, as of right now it's really more on a team by team basis you know you watch I don't know if you watch hard knocks or anything uh, with the Chargers and Rams that HBO special um, I've been watching a few episodes of that and it's clear that the coaches are taking it seriously they're telling their players all the time uh, to be responsible you know don't bring that into the facilities don't be reckless uh, do everything you can to you know limit where you go and so that's good messaging. I think every team across the NFL is typically giving that similar messaging because obviously you don't want to be the one team that gets a big breakout because that's going to affect your success. That's going to postpone your games and it's going to affect your chances to compete in a championship and make the playoffs um, if half your team is you know not able to play. So I think coaches are going to be taking it seriously, but you know you still have to communicate that message to the players and so my suggestion for really how the nfl can sustain a plan to have a season during a pandemic is like i said earlier have that hub city system where every team in every city so for example the minnesota vikings you have your training camp your training facilities um, in that city you put all your players all of your team in a hotel in that suburb or that specific area near the facility uh, because most of these facilities are probably in the middle of a major you know suburb of those team cities so they're going to have resources available they'll have restaurants they'll have um, some entertainment places you know whatever they need um, outside of just their hotel rooms but the teams themselves they have trainers they have nutritionists they have all these resources at their disposal to where they can sustain just you know being in a hotel for four or five months during the season. So really, I know it's not much of a suggestion, but that's really what the simple idea I have is, is you want to limit what players can do. And uh, another aspect of everything is with the fans. Um, you know, there's really no set rule in place that the NFL has as far as having fans in a stadium. And I know it's more on a state by state basis. Some states might allow larger crowds or a little bit larger gatherings than, you know, a few people. And other states might be completely restrictive. Um, if you look at the Vikings, just hit my mic there. Um, if you look at the Vikings, um, you know, in Minnesota, they've been super strict with everything. So I don't, as of right now, they can't really have fans in a stadium. Um, but if you look at other states, you know, that are taking it less seriously or maybe don't have many cases, um, you know, maybe they would allow fans in a stadium. And that really provides a huge competitive disadvantage across the league. I'll use the Vikings as, as an example again. Week one, we play the Packers, our most heated division rival. Well, we host the Packers if we don't have fans in our stadium. That's a huge disadvantage because if we have fans, that's a huge boost to our crowd noise, our defense, our ability to really shake the road team. But a few weeks later, later on in the season, you know, if we go down to Lambeau Field and play Green Bay and they can have half a stadium full or who knows, maybe even a full stadium, whatever they feel like they can do, then that's unfair. And it it's it sucked to say it, but it really is unfair because we didn't have any fans when we played them, but then they get to have a bunch of fans when we go to their turf. So um, that's why the NFL, Roger Goodell, really needs to set rules as far as fans as well. I know you want to have fans in the stadiums. I know you want to have that revenue. I know you want to charge everyone $30 for a beer and everything else you want to do with the sky-high concession prices. But the reality is if one team has fans, then the rest of them have to have fans. Or if one team can't have fans, then none of them should be able to have fans. Just to make it more even across the board. 
those are really the two main things. I think the NFL needs to set up hub cities and they really need to limit fans until they have this thing fully under control and until every team has that ability to bring fans into their stadium. Now, would the NFL enact either of these policies? I highly doubt it. There's, I think, two weeks until the season starts and that's just way too short notice to implement any of these major changes. So, you know, we'll see what they do. I think as of right now, they're kind of going with the rules they have in place and just hoping that works out. So we'll see. We'll see what happens from there. Um, I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful that we have NFL football this year. I'm hopeful that the season continues. Um, and I'm hopeful the Vikings win a championship, although I have my doubts there as well. So I don't know what's more likely, the Vikings to win a championship or the NFL to adapt hub cities. It's really a toss-up. They're both pretty unlikely. So anyway, um, that's my thoughts on the NFL season. I want it to happen, and I hope it does, but I have my concerns. So if you like this video, please uh, you know respond, you know subscribe, like this video, comment. Uh, let me know your thoughts. Do you think the NFL is going to have a good season this year? Do you think there's going to be speed bumps along the way like I do? Um, it's really an interesting scenario. They've had all these months to prepare, and I'm really unimpressed with what they've come forward with. So that's it for me today. Thanks for watching, and uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Go out and enjoy your sports.